begin. Um, who doesn't like Mikhail Tal? So, just on the account of my opponent's name, I'm going to start with this move. Otherwise, I probably would have started with something else. <laughs> okay, that's quite the way to meet this opening. Um, let's try something a bit adventurous today. Normally, I avoid mainline French openings. But, again, on account of my opponent's name being Likes Tall, let's uh, try to make this a bit exciting. Um, let's see, how does all this go? Yep, yep, yep. So is it Queen G4 here? I, I think it was Queen G4. <sighs> These things are important. Uh, Okay. Yellow, here we go. That was a good motto for playing chess. I mean, it is true. The king does all the at once. Um, yeah. There should be a variant called zombie chess. Yeah, I bet it doesn't exist. I bet nobody's ever played zombie chess before. Best out of three, where you must checkmate the opponent three times. Ooh, that sounds fun. But the game doesn't reset after <laughs> That sounds horribly broken. And you can respawn your king wherever. Yeah. Yeah, having more than one king or that sort of thing um, gets broken very quickly. It totally work. I mean, whoever gets the first one will probably win in most cases. Well, the deal is, like, say you did manage to checkmate your opponent, and then they bring their king back. I'm sure you would take your time winning the first game, capturing all their pieces as their king hopelessly runs away. Yeah. And then the second and third battles might not be such a battle. Um, Maybe you get a couple pieces back, or I don't know. Yeah. There are ways to make it work. Somebody's invented a game called Transcendental Chess, where I think you like play a game of chess to determine what's possible in this particular game of chess. Yeah, like, uh... It's very meta. I've never myself played it, but... Um, that would be the right thing to name. Yeah. Okay. So Zombie I have... chess. Precisely no idea what's going on here. Oh, but the zombie king can move two squares at once. Yeah, that's cool. <sighs> so I got this option available. I could force him to move his rook to an active square. Um, I do get two pawns if I do this. Or I could wimp out and just play my pawn forward one square. Um, and this gives control to my opponent to decide what's going on next, but, I mean, what can he do? There's really nothing menacing. If I play e5, he just castles, and where have I gotten? Yeah, we're going to go for it. It's move five, and already my queen's on the other side of the board. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Certainly this isn't what anybody expected. Center is coming under attack. Um, so many options. Oh man, 
It's not a good combination, but it's just one move away from working. Combination is, I move my bishop out, he does something, then my knight goes here, and the knight goes there. Actually it fails for two different, completely different reasons. Um, so, I've gotten two pawns. I think I just need to break this pin and let him take my pawn. I could try... Um, could try to mix this up somehow, like bishop here. Uh, that could be interesting. Um, got bishop there, knight here. A3 is possible. Um, Why not a3? a3 looks quite reasonable. Um, if he takes my knight, I take back. If he takes my pawn, I take his bishop. If he takes my knight, I do pawn takes. My king's a little exposed temporarily, but it's nothing to be alarmed about. Yeah, we'll do a3. See how that goes. So if he takes my knight, I take back. It's not entirely clear how this is going. I am up two pawns. Okay, I did... This is actually why I played this sequence, is because I expected queen a5. And wanted to rejoin her with uh, bishop d2. Which is a pretty standard-ish kind of move in these positions, I think? At any rate, it prevents the fork, and if he takes on d4, I can take back. So this knight, this knight here is locked to the def oh, let's try a different key. This knight is stuck defending um, that rook. Um, so the knight can't move. The rook itself is targeted. Because um, I've got this pressure going. Okay. And again, that is a pretty standard move in these positions, but not because it favors black. It's just... Um, I mean, sure, it does keep the bishop out of d3, so I can't go there. But um, this really doesn't slow my attack very much. So I just need to continue development in a sane, rational manner. So that develops. Uh, my queen's defending this. His rook's, uh, his rook's still under fire here. Um, granted, he does control some squares on my side of the board. Um, but that, I mean, easily return the favor there. Oh, incidentally, um, this point is attacked. So if I could just bring up some more firepower on it, uh, I'd be golden. Um, so, because of that, I am heavily considering this maneuver, um, which I think would compel rook f8. The only reason I didn't bust this out right away is because rook f8 doesn't actually help me too much. 
I guess I could follow with bishop e2 and bishop h5. Or I could start with bishop e2. My knight's not very well placed on g5 is my point. Um, oh, his knight's going to f6. So if I'm going to do anything involving this square, or he could go to f8. Either one, really. Um, but, yeah, because he's intending one of these moves, if I'm going to force this rook to f8, I have to play knight g5 immediately to force it. Uh, otherwise, there's no time. Um, so, yeah, knight g5 it is. With the double attack on f7. The point here isn't so much... Um, well, I mean, it does get pressure off the g-file. Um, actually, that is the point. I was going to say that there was something else that it does, but not really. Um, and so, yeah, once he plays rook f8, I can just play e5, and I control f6 um, then. So, knight f6 is out of the question. Um, so I'm curious what he's going to do about all this pressure. And e5 is good because it controls more spaces on his side of the board. Um, and once the center is locked, then I can just throw my h-pawn up. And in over the board game, I once had the opportunity to do a very similar thing on the queen side where my a-pawn just raced up the board and there was no rook to oppose it um, in that particular position. And my opponent hadn't suspected it. Yeah, I forget if my pawn was standing on... I think it was on a4 at the time. So I just pushed a5, a6, a7. Like, moves right in a row and he immediately resigned once he saw what was going on. But um, it's rare to get these situations where you just have a runaway pawn. So, um, yeah, my point of knight... Oh, okay. I did not expect that, but it is good. Well, I have to take the rook at this point, so... Okay, I've given up my rook. This is why you stop and think before moving. Um, I say as I move yet again. Mikhail Tall would approve of this game. No question. <laughs> okay. This got way sharper than I imagined. I thought, well, surely his point was just that he was going to do, like, pawn takes on e4 and discovery on my bishop. And it wasn't until after I moved that I see this queen c3 thing. And I went, oh. Yeah. So, yeah, details are sometimes important in a chess game. On the bright side, I'm not mated here. I mean, I am losing a rook, so it puts me down uh, pretty heavily material-wise and down a minor piece for the pawn. But I got some position to compensate for um, that stuff. It's probably not enough. Not nearly so. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's going to take on a1. The only reason I move king e2 instantly is because everything else is far worse. Um, so I made two oversights in a row, and dropping the knight and dropping the rook. Um, although, really, it was just a rook exchange at that point. Um... To follow up here, I need to play queen h8 to defend d4. There's no other way to defend it. Well, there is king e3, but that allows queen c3 check, um, which hurts. So, yeah, we're continuing, just developing a piece here, protecting d4. And it's moments like these where I actually appreciate that 
um, very few people are watching my stream. Because it is, I admit, it is embarrassing to overlook such things. Yes, I can get a runaway H pawn, and I might have to rely on that here. I got so fixated on that side of the board that I forgot my opponent has pieces too. And compound that with the fact that I'm playing an opening that I rarely play. Just on a whim I played this. Um, just not the best way to play chess. Um, at least not if you're trying to win. So, I've debated queen f6 here, but it doesn't lead anywhere. Like, he could play knight c6 against queen f6, he could play, um, I'm not sure what else. Knight g6, I was thinking. Um, but yeah, knight c6 against queen f6, and I've gotten nowhere. So, I have to continue. We have to promote the pawn. And pretend this is on purpose. Um, if he plays knight to g6 here, namely this knight, because that's the only one that can move there, I'm going to follow with queen f6. With a subtle threat there, but really the point is that this gains the tempo, forcing him to play bishop d7, and then I can kick his knight, and I can... who knows what follows. Um, I am down material, so I have to play somewhat aggressively here to... I have to somehow assert an advantage somewhere. Um, and so yeah, h4 is my attempt to prove that I've got some advantage or some compensation um, for my missing minor piece. I'm not afraid of his pieces right now. Maybe I should be. Um, I did hesitate before playing knight g5. I was concerned about it, and now I know why. And in hindsight, if I had to do something, if I had to play this game again, um, obviously I wouldn't play knight g5. Um, Okay, he wants to take back, sure. Honestly, I think his queen's more threatening on a2 than on a3. Um, queen a2 had me much more alarmed or concerned about what's going on. Um, I wonder what he's got in mind. So I know he's got runaway pawns as well. I'm not worried. Maybe I should be. Okay, so this does defend e7. And incidentally, f8, if this knight moves away, the queen defends the knight on the back. So I have to figure out what's the most clever thing to do here. Um, What a bother. My pieces are terribly misplaced. I might have to play f3. Just to give my pieces some room to breathe. Although I could keep running my h1. Um, This is the trickiest move, because this is like, I could do a waiting move, or I could choose to just go all in with h5. I've got all kinds of waiting moves at my disposal. Um, but no reason to pick any one over the others. 
That's the problem, is that if I'm doing a waiting move, I don't know which one I do. I guess, um, yeah, might as well do h5 unless my king's getting mated. It very well might be, but I, I don't see it. It's that complicated here. Um... Hmm. I mean, I could do g3 and bishop h3 if I have no faith in my attack. Yeah, I think I have to just run it. What a mess. Even here, I'm not really threatening to promote the pawn. Although, him shuffling pieces about on the side does make it make this pawn advance more dangerous. What I'm alarmed about, and I have no idea whether I should be or not, is um, the idea of some counterattack happening and being entirely decisive. Um, it's just really hard to judge these things. These are the sorts of things that you learn with experience what works and what doesn't. Um, and I'm just hoping that he doesn't have a completely decisive counterattack here. This is hope chess, because I'm just operating blind here. I don't know this position. Um, never seen anything like it in my games. Other than the one where I pushed on the queen side and um, my pawn raced so quickly and there was just absolutely no resistance. Here things are far more complicated and I'm down material to boot. So It's hard to say. It's very hard to see what happens. Also, I don't know if I should be pushing e5 or not. Oh. Um, that signals either that he's trying to develop his bishop, or that he wants to castle. Um, can't tell which. So if I do h6, um, there's no tactics that win material, right? Yeah. So I can't win material with h6. Uh, if I do bishop h6, I think knight c6 is okay. You still can castle there, too. Um, well, that is weird, though. Bishop h6, knight c6, queen f6. Um, oh, but then he trades queens on e7. And if I play queen f6 here, he does knight h7. So... Uh, it's tricky. This is very tricky. Um, we could see some in-between moves here. Oh, I could take on d5. Um, I don't know how good that is. It looks extremely dangerous to take on d5. Just assuming he doesn't take back, I mean, what do I do next? 
It's a shame I lost a knight, because a knight would be a really useful piece to have in this kind of position. Um, I think I'm forced to do queen f6. And this at least stops him from castling. Also simultaneously brings my h-pawn just that little bit closer to promoting. Um, there is one problem with this. And so I have to figure out what can I do. Like, is this my only way that I can continue here, or do I have any other options? Um, namely, if the position repeats, what do I do? I suspect it will. I'm still looking for an answer. Yeah, it's important that I play this move right away. Um, <laughs> Queen e5 did cross my mind. I'm not sure why it did, because it's not entirely clear what's going on after that move. Um, I mean, I have interesting pressure, but I don't think it amounts to anything. At least against queenside castle, I have pressure. Queen e5 disincents him to castle, but... Uh, oh, wait. Uh, I don't know. It's really hard to judge. Not a comfortable position. If only because uh, I find it really hard to believe that queen e5 is okay. Um, but I see nothing to refute it either. Okay, I see something that might refute it. Truly, we're playing with fire here. I think what he's doing is he's counting on a perpetual happening. And that's why he's taking some time to see if he's got anything better than a perpetual. And I'm not sure that there is a perpetual uh, here. Okay. Black goes for it. That's a ballsy move. Um, so, do I go with an equally stubborn response, or what do I do here? I'm going to run the pawn. So I'm down a minor piece and a pawn, but I'm a couple squares from promoting. And my opponent's king is just as exposed as mine is. Okay. Oh, that does deal with the promotion threat, doesn't it? 
Yeah. That's a problem. So, if I do h7, he castles, I can't immediately promote. Because he's got more pieces. Well, knight takes, rook takes. Okay, I'm down two pawns there. With some pressure. Uh, h7, castle, h8, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. Check. King moves, I still can't take the knight. Do have queen e5 check. This appears to be my strongest way to continue. I'm rushing here because I, I did try listing other candidate moves in my head. You have to trust me on that. And there was nothing that seemed better. Um, see, I'm going to be down a couple pawns here. Um, but that's the best I could do having blundered away a piece earlier. Uh, actually, I could take on e7, couldn't I? Queen takes, and if queen takes queen, bishop takes, and he moves his rook. Um, I don't know if that's what I want to do. I want to keep queens on the board. What a mess. I could take e7. I could take the knight. Um, h8. Um, it's a tough choice. If I take there, if a queen trade happens, I'm still down two pawns. I have a bishop pair and an active king. And his rook will be displaced. Um, I think this is the best end game I can hope for. I have no middle game checkmates. I've looked and looked and looked and I don't see anything after rook takes and then knight c6. Um, that's because I keep miscounting. Rook takes... Yeah. yeah. I have to do rook takes here. That's because I can't count that this is actually three pieces hitting the rook. And he's got one defending. It'll only be two defending if the knight moves back. I counted that so many different times, and I miscounted it every single time until the last. And I finally got it right. I have three pieces hitting d8. Even though there's a knight in the way and the knight's protected. And even though the king defends the rook, uh, even though my rook is hanging, despite all of those facts, I still have three pieces attacking d8. Um... Okay, so he's threatening to play c3 check. I'm not scared. Um, I could take on e7 and win material. It loses my rook, though. I thought I had something here. I thought I had something. Taking e7 loses my rook. Okay. Hopefully I don't get mated here. Oh, that's check. It's a position zook. So it gives him time to move his other pieces. Um, uh, 
Okay. So the important point is that I don't lose my rook. If he checks me, maybe I do take the bishop and sack my rook. I get the... No, I don't get the knight. Um... See, so yeah, if he checks, I just move my king. Uh, which allows him to move his knight. <sighs> Nothing's ever easy. Okay, I mean, despite his knight moving, though... Um, C3 doesn't make my king any more endangered than it's already endangered. Nor does it expose me to any forks that otherwise wouldn't happen. Um, this is just a complex position. I think my king is going to play a very interesting role this game. Oh. I did not expect that. Um... I mean, I knew it was possible, I just didn't think he would do that. So I'm still down two pawns. So theoretically, this is a very difficult endgame to hold. Um, Please don't fall for mating one somewhere. <laughs> uh, I hope that's not mating me somehow. Um, I'm losing a pawn. Oh, I'm not, because that cuts off his queen. Oh, I thought I was losing this f-pawn. In actuality, I'm just getting better developed here. Um, Okay, gained material. He's got a far advanced C pawn. Um, very far advanced. I can't give up my pawn here. If I give up my D pawn, this is over. Tactics are complicated. I hope that that doesn't let his pawn promote. Um, okay, that's one too many pawns for me to start counting at this point. 
Um, I don't do this out of spite. I do this to locate the king to the C file where I can fork it again and put my queen on a more active square. That's the point of this move. So now I could potentially do queen moves or queen checks. Um, Okay, if I do this, it does have one queen check, but it's quite distant. Okay. These queen checks just keep getting further and further away, I think. Until this last one. Actually, that one's difficult to deal with. Um, I need to hide away. Yeah, I was imagining that my king could take this, um, but then my g-pawn goes, and the end game is quite unclear. Um, it's preferable that I keep my g-pawn if I can. Okay, you can't check me, so I can afford to do this. Checking sequences are difficult to calculate. If I go here, it goes h7, h3. Yeah, I've got my king covered. This is dangerous. <laughs> but if I point my bishop on e5, things simplify? Uh, I go back here. And I think we're on the right path. And the key is if he checks me here, I've got this. I don't know how else he checks me. And so now I've got this threat. Yeah, this is just winning for white. Oh, why don't I do bishop d2? Bishop d2 is like an instant win. Um, yeah, we'll do bishop d2 now. It's not as clear as it would have been a tempo ago, but it's still pretty good. And because his king's on e7, this doesn't work at all.
That was quite the game. Quite the adventure, that. So he's just trying to box out my king and bishop, and I'm trying to box out his king. He can take this for all I care. I'm going to take this and that. And unless there's an easier way, this is going to be the one that promotes. Hey, chess. Yeah, we just finished an interesting competition with our friend here, Likestall. Good game. Very good game, sir. Thanks for the game, it's been fun. Um, let's continue our tradition of doing analysis after the game. Um, just kick up Stockfish, because I really don't know what happened in this game. Um, I mean, obviously Knight G5 was an enormous blunder, and should have been preceded by H4. I was saying I don't have time for H4 on account of things like Knight F8, Hmm. You know, maybe I should have just played e5 right away. Let's say, you know what? It's going to be a long, drawn-out battle without much tactics or excitement. Just play e5, close this up, and have a positional struggle. Because um, unless the queen teleports here, I don't see what I'm worried about. Um, so what should I have done instead of hanging a knight? E5. Yeah, Stockfish confirms it. Uh, 8, queen a5 was too slow. Maybe queen c7. Yeah, like a poison pawn. Uh, I don't know where this queen a1, queen h8, knight f8, this thing comes from. Um... Presumably that's after I hung everything. Yeah, obviously... Oh. I did not know bishop takes g5 is terrible here. Oh, because it loses the c-pawn and weakens my king. Like here, I'm only down a little bit of material. And it serves me right for playing this aggressively. But, um... Yeah, I just blundered twice in a row. That's what really stung, is this move. Yeah, it's a very exciting game, for sure. Um, let's see, h6. I just keep going deeper and deeper into the hole with these moves. Uh, and black apparently missed knight... Oh! I didn't even consider that. I was considering, like, knight c6 to defend all this stuff. This knight d5 is aggressive. Wow! Um, I guess, uh, what about my idea of, like, queen e5 here? This, like, black can't castle. I, well, maybe he can. No, I mean, right now he can't, but, um, what's the big idea after queen e5? This just looks incredibly dangerous for black. Okay, queen e5, queen a2. Okay. Yeah, let's just push the h pawn. Sack this. King back. Check. Hang up. Give my king an escape square. Knight takes pawn. Rook takes knight. Take. Uh, it's scary that it suggests that. Oh! Oh! I did not see that. Uh, if any of you did see that, um, don't know why you're watching this game. Okay. So that's the key idea, is that this crashes through fast enough to protect H7. Otherwise, <laughs> this looks quite scary for black. 
Uh. Uh. Okay. So that makes queen g7 best, but here my pressure is kind of uh, falling apart. I mean, I've given up direct control. I mean, I still control d4, but not e4, not f4, not d5, not d6, not c7. This is way more comfortable for black. And, yeah, I mean, here I'm just trivially getting pummeled. Um, because I have no threats anywhere. Uh, uh, okay. So, yeah. So apparently because black missed all this fascinating stuff with knight d5, I, like Mikhail Tall, get away with my nonsense here. Uh, okay, castle's a good move. Unexpectedly good, I guess. Uh, we take. Yeah, Stockfish is just wavering a bit about how strong it thinks this position is. Um, so we take h8. Oh, and yeah, I took forever on this. I couldn't decide between taking that knight or this knight. Uh, down the rabbit hole lies this, this, this. Yeah, I saw that, saw that, this, that. Didn't see that. I only saw king takes pawn. Um, okay, this is, looks like a useful tempo gaining move. Didn't see that, but that makes sense, because we'd want to use the bishop to take it. Um... And I guess white's just going to hope that after bishop moves back, that black repeats or something. Although black is prefer preferred here, but... Um, yeah. Well, that's sharp. Why not try to castle and be up a safe piece? Um... I don't know, like, was there... Okay, what what's this hypothetical about castling? Because, I mean... Yeah, I would like to play a simple win. I mean, he's castled here, right? And he's up some material. Bishop b5. Best move is bishop a4, but bishop e5 loses, like, half a pawn. Um... Yeah. Yeah, d takes e4 was good. Um, I know I mentioned during the game uh, I didn't expect this to happen. Um, I was really over-optimistic about my chances here. I was also thinking about things like rook h3 hitting the queen and uh, I eventually figured out that rook h3 just doesn't do any good for me. And encourages the queen to move to a better square and puts my rook on a dangerous place. And the only reason it doesn't do me any good is because I don't have anywhere to move it. Like, if I could move it, I don't know, to a3 or b3 and do something useful over here, that'd be one thing, but the rook lift is just not interesting here. So yeah, this pawn capture was good. Um, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, so we did end up going down this line. Uh, <laughs> okay, queen b8. That did occur to me after I moved. Um, I thought this was useful, though. Because I'm threatening e4. What's my big idea after queen b8? Is it just that he can't defend b7 or something? Knight d5. Oh, right! Yeah, what he played in the game was more than good enough. It shut my queen out. And now if I play queen b8, I've wasted a tempo playing it. Um, f3 is just dangerous. It's reckless. Um, yeah, no, knight d5 was excellent. Both in the opening, as you saw, and during the game, I missed this move. And in both cases, it was a very strong move. Um, C3, on the other hand, it looked strong, but it shut out the queen. 
and this really hampered Black's mobility. Um, yeah, so... I managed to scurry away a little bit, and we trade, and... Queen b2 is a blunder. Oh, because I get to take the knight. Right. Um, f6. Don't know why all the pieces shuffled there, but... Oh yeah, f6 forces a piece trade. Um, we both missed this. And this renders my e4 not so clever. And I was worried when I played e4 that, um, surely black has m must have something here, because e4 looks too good to be true. And this is what I missed. And now I'm forced to trade off my bishop, and I'm just losing c2. So I have to give a perpetual check somehow. We saw in the game that these kind of checking variations are difficult to calculate. But yeah, now once we got into an equal endgame, um, even sacking the bishop, this is still pretty difficult. Did I miss anything fundamental here somewhere? Okay, a queen g6 was not the most aggressive place for the queen. It looks scary because the bishop's pinned, but it really isn't. I trade because I'm tired of all this tension on my pawn, and this starts to expose the black king a bit. Um, but mostly because the tension on the pawn means I can't chase down this c pawn. But now that my d pawn's gone, I can afford to go after the c pawn. So what did I miss here? Check, check. King f3 is equal, somehow. This is a check. Okay, what's the deal? Why do I have to block with the bishop? Why must I block with the bishop? Why can't I just go back? This check, I go here. This check, I... Why would I go there? Why not here? this. I guess what Stockfish is saying is that this end game is equal. I was aware of a possibility that this end game could be drawn. For example, if I trade queens here, um, I was aware that I might not be winning this, despite having the bishop. Because uh, these pawns do move very quickly. Um, Yeah, so I have to just run, 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 try to stop... Oh, and his king guards this square, so I have to go this way. Um, but yeah, just FYI. Wait, what? Oh, because he's going to play b4 next. Um, not that it changes anything, but... Okay, a2, b3... Yeah, I was aware that I might not be winning this, is my point. I might not be losing it either, but having the bishop doesn't automatically give you the win. Um, but uh, I'll point out, like, in fact, Stockfish and I will point it out when we think, um, uh, when we got some advantage here. Um... So, uh, how'd this game go? Oh, but my point, so I was questioning why king f3 is drawish. And the answer is because it just gives black this queen f5 opportunity, which exchanges queens and allows black to run. Whereas if I go uh, queen b5 check, then king f3, then this is winning. Wow. That is hard to believe. So the same exact move, one move later, goes um, from drawing to winning. How does that make any sense? Like, oh, I guess because there's no queen d3 check. Um... Like, if my king were over on the h-file, 
then the queen trade wins for, or draws for him. But since my king is not on the h file, and since he doesn't have queen d3 check, and since c2 doesn't put the pawn any closer to promoting, um, Whitney has an advantage here. Oh my goodness. End games are difficult. They're worthy of study. Um, yeah. As I point out during the game, having the bishop on e5 would be strong. It defends the pawn and it reaches into black's territory. Here it's not even necessary because the king is really well shielded. It can sit on f4 instead. But um, in general, the bishop on e5 would be useful for solidifying all of this. Um, so, yeah, we'll take that off. Um, queen h5. Okay. Wait. I thought the king e3... I miscalculated something? I miscalculated? King e2. King e3 is... Oh! That's clever. So... I avoided king e3 because I saw queen h2 getting the g-pawn. Uh, uh, what about this? So, there's got to be an answer here. Check. Oh. Check. That's the answer to queen h2. Okay, but my real concern is that he just takes the pawn in general. Not the h2 specifically, but just in general. Okay, this wins e6. Um, so that's refuted two different ways. Uh, that's why king e3 is brilliant. Uh, in this position, all that occurred to me was king d3. And I was confused here. Uh, he's probably winning too. Um, it's just looked really exposed somehow, but how do I win this? What if he takes? Oh, then e6 drops like it did in the other line. Um, so he just has to keep checking, and checking, and checking, and he has no checks. So if I'd seen, like, that six or seven move combination afterward. Yeah, I could have just used my king to take the pawn and walk back here. Um, and seeing all the side variations where, again, my king escapes. It's a little tricky to manage with that uh, clock ticking. Um, so queen of seven, I go back. And yeah, once I take the pawn, I don't think I blundered after this. Uh, there might have been more accurate ways to win the game, but I found one that was at least winning enough. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously bishop d2 would have improved, which is just easily winning, because if, like, king here, king here, um, I guard my pawn. And sure, you can follow with king c... F well, okay. Let's take a look. Why would he play that? Why not this? Let's stay sane here. Okay, that's why. Uh, it's because we don't have time. So, yeah. B4 just delays the inevitable. Um, but if I don't see that this pawn is the way to win it, then this is tricky. But, um, yeah. It's an interesting game. Definitely shows why it pays off to know your openings. Um, or at least know the ones that you play. Like, okay, so 97 caught me way off guard, and probably caught my opponent off guard after this. If not before this, with like Queen G4 and all that. Um, but, he came up with some pretty resourceful attacks on my king. Came up with some ways to defend his own king, and. Uh, we had an interesting game. Uh, so yeah, thanks to everybody for watching, and um, we'll be back later. So, see you next time.